All right, mathematicians, if you have completed tables A and B, you are ready to dive into table C. And at the top of table C, I'd like you to put factor pairs as your title, because that's really what we are investigating when we're working on table C. In tables A and B, we were trying to find multiples of two, or multiples of three, or multiples of seven. And now we're doing the opposite. We have been given the multiples on table C, all the way up to the multiple 100. And we are going to investigate and try to find as many factor pairs as we can for each multiple. Now you've actually already done this work. You've already started investigating um, a couple weeks ago when I gave you some random multiples and you were trying to build arrays. So for example, I we had the multiple six, right? You then got out six items, whatever yours were. Maybe they were beans, maybe they were cards. In this case, I have six squares. And we were trying to make equal rows or arrays. So right here, I could say that I have six all together, just taken one time. And I would say that I found a factor pair of six taken one time. So six and one are factors of six. And then we also said, hmm, I wonder if we can make an, a different array with equal rows. If I move these squares down here, then I just found a new array or some new factor pairs. I have three taken two times. Now, we also discovered in this investigation that when you're working with equal rows, you can either look at them as rows or you can look at them as columns, right? And if I'm looking at my columns, I can see two taken three times. That's the same, those, those factors are the same, they just were swapped, and so I don't need to write them again. I'm just gonna keep six times one and three times two, and I know in my head that one taken six times and two taken three times would also work. So you've already done this work. We are now going further with it, and we're gonna investigate multiples all the way up to multiples of 100. So I'm gonna get rid of this really fast, and I'm gonna bring back table C, but I'm also gonna bring in table A as well to have handy in just a second. So I'm gonna start, you can start wherever you want, but I'm just gonna start at one. Um, this is saying the multiple of one, and I'm trying to find as many factor pairs as I can. Well, if I only have one square, there's really, I can't do anything else. It's just, it's just one square, right? Or one taken one time. And so next to my multiple of one, I'm gonna write my factor pair or my multiplication problem. One taken one time, that's it. If I have two squares, I can do two here, two taken one time, or I can flip them and I can do one taken two times. I'm just gonna pick which one I want because I know those, those are the same exact thing. And I think I'm just gonna do two taken one time. For three, I know right away that's three taken one time. But four, I know for a fact I can do four taken one time, always, right? I can always do my number times itself. Or I know that two taken two times will also get me to four. So if you come across a multiple that has more than one factor pair, you're gonna separate them with a comma. Now, there's something very important about table C. You are going to need some sort of colored um, utensil. It doesn't have to be colored. I like it to be colored because then it pops out more. I'm gonna use red. If you come across a number that only has itself multiplied by one or itself taken one time, I'd like you to make those stand out. And I'm gonna just circle that multiple. So I know that two, the only way I can make two is by taking its own number, two, multiplied by one. And the same for three, actually. I can only do three taken one time. Four I'm not going to circle because four has more than just its self times one. It has another factor pair, okay? So that's what you're, that's one part of table C. Now, as you get up to these bigger numbers, like let's say 
38, and that you don't know those factors off the top of your head or they're not really easy to um, build with squares if they're getting too big, this is where table A and B come into play. So I'm going to grab table A because this multiple is less than 50, and I know that table A was only going up to multiples of 50, and I'm going to hunt for the multiple 38. Let's see, I'm gonna go down my twos. Oh, here's a 38 right here. And so that factor pair is two taken 19 times. And so I can go to table C, find 38 and say two taken 19 times. Now I also know that I can do 38 taken one time, right? I always know that. You can write that if you want to, you don't have to. Um, I like to write it just so that I know there's more than one factor pair. Um, I'm gonna go back to table A though. I hunted in my twos. Um, I don't see it in my threes, but I'm gonna go hunting in my fours. Nope, there's 36. I know it's not gonna be fives. Hunt my sixes, nope. Hunt my sevens, nope. Hunt my eights, hunt my nines, hunt my tens. Okay, now I don't see them anywhere in here. And so if in table B, table B goes to 100, so I don't even need to look there, right? So I don't have any more 38s on my table A. Now, that's not to say that there aren't more that make 38. Um, in fact, I think there is because I know that 30, oh, nope, that's it. That's my only way to make 38 because 38 cut in half would be 19. So I found all my factors for 38 using table A and table B. I'm gonna go over on this side and I'm gonna pick a random number, let's see, 63. I'm gonna look at table B because table B is factors greater than 50 but less than 100 and I'm gonna go hunting for 63. Let's see. Nope, not in twos. Oh, there's one. Three taken 21 times, that makes 63. So 63 I know can be 63 taken one time. And then I said 21 taken three times. And I'm gonna keep hunting because I think there's more. 60, no, not there. Definitely not my fives. Fives have to end in zero or five. No sixes. Oh, there's a 63. Seven taken nine times. Let's keep hunting. I think that's it. Yep, there's a 63, but again, that's nine taken seven times, which is the same thing, so I don't need to write those factors twice. And that's it. I just found all my factors for 63. So I don't need to circle 63 up because it has more than just itself times one. This is big work. I suggest um, doing a little bit each day, maybe doing, I don't know, 10 a day or... Uh, yeah, I'd say like 10 a day. Um, and you do, if you have table A and B, it makes table C much, much easier. Um, I am going to circle one, not in red. I'm actually gonna circle it in black. And when we meet and go over table C, I will explain why I've done this. But one is kind of special. So I'm gonna circle it in black. Every other one that you find that only has the number time itself times one, you're going to circle in red or any color you choose. But one needs to be um, in black, and we'll talk about that when we meet and go over our investigation a little bit later.